Do you know whether everyone on your team feels safe to share their opinions, ask questions, contribute and challenge the status quo? If not, then this video is for you. Today, I will share with you a quick check you can do to determine the level of psychological safety on your team and also some key behaviors and steps you can take as an individual or as a leader to build psychological safety in your team. Hi, I'm Anne Koopman, and I'm a former engineer and senior leader in the manufacturing industry. And now I work as a leadership coach and as an expert for team development. Make sure you subscribe below because I regularly publish new videos with very practical tips on leadership and also how to manage and develop effective teams. This is the third video of my three-part series on psychological safety. Make sure you check out this playlist up here for the other two videos on a definition about what is psychological safety, why it is so important, and then lastly with this video on what you can do to implement psychological safety. So I will walk you through a quick check you can take with your team to understand the level of psychological safety you have. I will share some examples for behaviors that everyone on your team can implement. And then I will share a few steps that you can take as a leader to build a more psychologically safe team. Let's start with the psychological safety check. Here it is important to acknowledge that the feeling of psychological safety is subjective. Every person might have different experiences that will lead them to feeling safe or not safe in the environment. So if you feel safe, that does not mean that everyone on your team feels safe. And as soon as one person does not feel safe, this means that you have an issue with psychological safety in your team. Amy Edmondson has designed a quick questionnaire that you can take in your organization based on seven questions and you can use that to gauge your level of psychological safety on your team. You can do this questionnaire either anonymously or openly depending on the trust in your team. It might be best to ask your team members what they would prefer to ensure that they feel safe when they answer this questionnaire. So here are the seven statements for the psychological safety check defined by Amy Edmondson in her book, The Fearless Organization. Statement number one. If I make a mistake on the team, I often feel criticized for it. Statement number two. In my team, it is possible to address difficult topics or share a problem. Statement number three. Members of the team reject others for being different. Number four. It is safe to take risks in my team. Number five. It is difficult to ask for help from other members in my team. Statement number six. No one on my team would do anything intentional to undermine my performance. And statement number seven. When working with my team members, my unique skills and strengths are valued and appreciated. So you can write these down, define a scale, and then do a check with your team to gauge where people are at. Once you have the results back and maybe had a bit of a conversation with team members, you can then start to look at certain behaviors that are important for your team. This is something that everyone on the team should be aware of. So in this next part, I will share with you examples for behaviors that might be applicable for you. The baseline for this is the four pillar model that I also shared in the very first video around psychological safety. And this is based on the four pillars of psychological safety by Timothy Clark. As a quick recap, these four pillars are inclusion safety, learner safety, contributor safety, and challenger safety. Inclusion safety makes sure that everyone feels safe and accepted as being part of the team. Learner safety is about feeling safe to make mistakes and to learn and ask questions. Contributor safety is about the feeling to feel safe, to contribute ideas, to not being ridiculed or made fun of. And number four is about challenger safety, which means that everyone feels like they can also challenge the status quo or challenge the opinions even of the leader or another very dominant person on the team. So let's go into some examples. Let's start with inclusion safety. Behaviors that would support this could be that everyone makes an effort to connect with people on the team that they don't naturally feel drawn to or naturally spend time with. In a team, you might often have people that are really close together and you might even have a little click and you might have people that naturally talk with one another over lunch or have catch-ups in between or have very alive teams chat for example. So this is a behavior that everyone on the team can do to make it a bit more intentional and an effort to connect and meet up 
and get to know every other person on the team. A second behavior could be to make an effort and make a point in understanding the preferred name everyone likes to be called and also really understanding how to pronounce it. Especially in international teams, I've seen it time and time again that the person with the name that might be on the first glance more difficult to pronounce because they might be from a different country or culture that they had to make accommodations and create an English version of their name, for example. And to really be respectful and include them, include their heritage, include their culture and include where they come from and them as a person, it's really important to make an effort to fully understand how to pronounce a name and then use that right pronunciation going forward. And a third behavior is to regularly check your own bias. We all have unconscious bias. If you want to understand more about unconscious bias, check out this playlist here. But we all have an unconscious bias that makes us judge and kind of cluster people as soon as we meet them. It's a natural way of our brain to detecting threats and to understand where we play, where we are in the world and also to sort through all the information that we are exposed to on a daily basis. The problem here is though that it sometimes leads us to acting differently around people. So we might actually spend less time with people that irritate us or frustrate us because they might be different to us and we unintentionally even kind of ignore them, don't look at them or even don't say hello. And the importance is that we all have bias. That's quite normal. And we can't naturally change our bias, but we can challenge it. So building awareness around who do we naturally talk to and why, and where do we maybe have some prejudice or some judgments placed on a person without even knowing anything about them. Let's now talk about learner safety and a few key examples of behaviors everyone on your team can start to implement. The first behavior would be to start to openly admit mistakes. As a leader, you can here lead by example, of course, but everyone should start to be invited and feel safe to admit mistakes. Then have a discussion around what you can learn from this and how to prevent this mistake to occurring again, but without judging the person and without criticizing them for it. Another example of a behavior could be to ask for help more often. We don't have to do it alone. We don't have to prove that we know everything. We can ask for help. We can ask for other opinions and bring people in. If we openly ask for help, we're showing that it's okay to not have all the answers and that gives the permission to everyone else to also ask for help. And another behavior could be to start to openly ask for feedback inviting feedback in, asking for feedback of how to make things better. If you start with this, you can build a culture that is open to feedback and uses feedback productively. So start by asking about feedback and this will also make it easier for others to be more open for feedback as well. Let's go to the third pillar of psychological safety, contributor safety. Here are a few examples of behaviors the whole team can implement. Make it a habit in a meeting to hear from everyone else about their opinions and their ideas. Make sure that there is a balance between the people who usually dominate a conversation to also invite the more quieter ones. Here you can also provide people that need to think and reflect a little bit more with the information before the meeting so they have some time to prepare their ideas and then share them. Another example is to invest in understanding everybody's strength. Help everyone see their strength, where they are different, where they are similar and build the appreciation around these differences and that everyone has something amazing and powerful to share with the team. This will encourage people because it will build the belief that they have something unique to offer. When they believe this, then they will also really start to share their ideas and contribute in a very meaningful and powerful way. And a third behavior could be to really be open to trying something. Give people permission to try, to fail, to test something out. You could have everyone test out their ideas in a small sample, in a very contained environment to see how it goes and how it works in a safe space without being judged, without using blame or shame afterwards. And lastly, let's talk about the fourth pillar, which is challenger safety. This means that everyone feels safe to challenge the status quo and also challenge your opinion as a leader. Some examples for behaviors for you as a leader could be to speak last, to wait until everyone else had a turn before you share your opinion. Because for some people that feel not as dominant and confident in conversations or meetings, as soon as you share your opinion, they don't necessarily dare to speak up and share theirs. For everyone on the team, another example is to make it an effort to react positively if their idea is challenged. So rather than feeling threatened, 
feeling criticized or feeling like you have to defend yourself, be open for an idea. Stay curious and look at maybe this idea could make your idea even better. It's okay if another idea gets implemented or if it is changed. This does not take away from your worth and your ability to perform your work well. And lastly, for everyone closely connected to the last behavior is to regularly check your ego. Are we dominating a conversation and not allowing people to challenge our ideas because we feel like our ego is closely tied to this idea and this identity that we have built. Check your ego and start to practice to be more open for other opinions and tell yourself that this does not take away from who you are and what you can contribute. So these are some ideas and some examples for behaviors everyone on your team can start to implement to build a more psychologically safe culture. Now in the last step of this video, I wanna share with you some key strategies for you as a leader of a team that are really important to set the tone. And these strategies are based on Amy Edmondson's work and her strategies mentioned in the book, The Fearless Organization. And these strategies are built around three key steps, setting the stage, invite participation and responding productively. What does that mean? So setting the stage as a leader of a team, whether you're taking over a team, whether you have new team members joining or whether you just regularly have some team meetings and team building activities, make it a habit to share that mistakes are welcome, that you expect mistakes to happen, that you expect the team to learn and that you expect them to not have all the answers yet. Define clear rules and values that are important in the team about how everyone treats each other, how everyone contributes, takes responsibility and ownership, and also treats everyone else with respect and how you want relationships to be built. And then unite your team with a shared purpose and a shared vision. Secondly, you then want to invite participation. This is closely connected to contributor safety and challenger safety. You want to make sure that everyone's opinions are heard and that there's a safe space and time for people to share their opinions. You can admit your gaps. You can ask for help. You can share that you don't have all the answers and that you have gaps in knowledge that you want other people to help you fill. You can ask for help. You can ask for opinions. As a leader, lead these effective conversations. And even if there's conflict, manage the conflict in a healthy way. Conflict often is something a team has to move through to get to better outcomes and better ideas. Make sure you create a safe space that feels exciting and inspiring for people to get into the spirit of sharing ideas and being more innovative. And then lastly, the factor around responding productively. This is all about how you respond to people making mistakes, sharing their gaps or asking questions. Make sure that you respond openly. Manage your emotions, stay in control of your emotions. Welcome mistakes. Don't judge, don't use shame or blame. Help them and coach them through the failures to figure out a way forward and the lessons learned. This really is key to build a psychologically safe culture. It really starts and ends with how you react when people start to ask questions and admit mistakes. You want to stay productive, you want to stay emotionally regulated so that people can learn that it's safe to share these mistakes and that they don't have to fear and your reaction and see it as a threat. So this was my video around how you can build and foster a more psychologically safe environment. Make sure that you check out these two videos as part of this series. And if you have any further questions on this topic and what you can do with your team, put them in the comments below and I can't wait to read your comments.